Google Research just dropped a new paper that might be the successor to the seminal attention is all you need paper that started this entire new AI wave. This paper details an approach called Titans, which details a way to give models memory much more akin to how human memory works with long term memory. And it happens during inference time with an interesting surprise mechanism. This is all quite complicated, but I'm going to try to break it down for you and really simple terms. So this is the paper Titans learning to memorize at test time. And this is out of Google research. Now the abstract of the paper describes the problem with transformers, which is the context window is limited because there is a big penalty as you increase the context window based on the transformers architecture. But what if you didn't have that limitation? What if you can have infinite tokens in a context window and it's still performed really well? That is what Titans aims to deliver. The way it's described in the paper is this more accurate modeling of dependencies, however, comes with a quadratic cost, limiting the model to a fixed length context. So when you think about the context window of major models, GPT 4.0, let's say 128K tokens, even the biggest context window with Gemini is 2 million tokens. And that's huge. But as our needs grow, we need ways to grow past that context window. And so what they're going to describe in this paper is a way for the Titan based models to learn to actually have long term memory and to figure out what to focus on, what to give its attention to. Our experimental results on language modeling, common sense reasoning, genomics, and time series tasks show that Titans are more effective than Transformers. They further can effectively scale to larger than 2 million context window size with higher accuracy and needle in a haystack tasks compared to baselines. So if this is true, this is a really important paper. So in the introduction, they first talk about transformers and why the attention mechanism was so important. Transformers, pure attention based architectures have been firmly established as state of the art models in sequence modeling. Basically, the vast majority of language models that you use today from OpenAI to n Anthropic, to Llama, DeepSeek, everything, they are based on the Transformers architecture and the attention mechanism. And it is the state of the art because it is due to their in-context learning and ability to learn at scale. The scale is the important part, but there is a major drawback to the Transformers architecture, which is it comes with quadratic time and memory complexity in terms of context length. Basically, it starts to struggle with longer context lengths. The more information you give it during inference time or in the prompt, the worse it performs. Now, this is all relative because with 2 million tokens, that's quite a lot. You can load up entire videos in that. But again, as our need to input more and more information into these models grows, then this problem becomes bigger and bigger. So in complex real world tasks, video understanding, long term time series forecasting, the context window can become extremely large, making the applicability of transformers challenging in these downstream tasks. So that is the problem. That is what they are trying to solve with Titans. And so what Titans really aims to do is model their architecture much more closely to how the human brain works. And the human brain has multiple types of memory. It has short term memory. It has long term memory. It has meta memory and how all of these different memory types work in coordination, but also can work independently is a critical feature of how the human brain works and how our thought processes work. And so that is not something that the current Transformers models do. And so again, that is what Titans aims to do give it multiple types of memory and allow these different types of memory to work together. We argue that in an effective learning paradigm similar to the human brain, there are distinct yet interconnected modules, memory modules, each of which is responsible for a component crucial to the learning process. All right, so now they take a 10,000 foot view here. What is memory? Why is it important? So memory is a fundamental mental process and is an inseparable component of human learning. So learning plus memory, two different things, but interconnected. And if we didn't have memory, humans and animals would be restricted to basic reflexes and stereotyped behaviors. So 
Think about the most basic types of organisms. They are just reacting to their environment, nothing more. Now, whether that's the case with humans and it's just so complicated, we can't actually see that and we think we have memory, that's a discussion for another time. So taking inspiration from the common definitions of memory and learning in neuropsychology literature, most existing architectures consider memory as a neural update caused by an input. So you see something, you hear something, you smell something, that is the input and that is the way a memory is formed. And define learning, separate from memory, learning as a process for acquiring effective and useful memory given an objective. And so in this paper, they aim to answer a few questions. One, what constitutes a good structure for the memory? Two, what is a proper memory update mechanism? Three, what is a good memory retrieval process? Four, how to design an efficient architecture that incorporates different interconnected memory modules. Remember, short-term, long-term meta memory. And five, is a deep memory module needed to effectively store remember long past? And again, that is one of the drawbacks of transformers. It really struggles with very long-term memory. And so what if you could bake that memory directly into the model? Now, here's the important part. In this paper, we aim to answer the above five questions by designing a long-term neural memory module that can efficiently and effectively learn to memorize at test time. I really wanna emphasize that, test time, not during pre-training. This is at the time when the model is actually running, when you're giving it a prompt and it's figuring out what to respond with. That is when they want to give the new memory to the model. So it learns how to memorize, store the data into its parameters at test time. And if this sounds familiar, it should be. I covered a paper called test time training, which basically in the most simple terms allowed a model to learn based on its prompt, it can actually update its parameters during that prompting and inference time. Now here's the most interesting part in my mind. We designed this memory module so an event that violates the expectations, more simply being surprised, is more memorable. Now let's think about how humans work. Think about when you're doing something really boring or something that you've done a million times, something really repetitive. Those actions are so ingrained in the way that you do things that you just kind of zone out and you kind of just do them without thinking about them. Think about, think about driving. Do you ever show up somewhere and then think, oh wow, I don't even remember driving here. It's because you've been driving so long, you kind of don't think about it. You don't have to think about it. And that is different from when something surprises us. Now think about this, you're driving and then all of a sudden you get cut off or there's a huge accident in front of you or anything, a tire falls from the sky, whatever it is. You're gonna remember that because that was a surprise and not something that you would encounter usually. And so that kind of function is what they're trying to give the model. There's this surprise mechanism and they actually baked it into the architecture of how memory works. Very fascinating. So when the model becomes surprised, it knows, okay, I need to memorize that. So we measure the surprise of an input. We present a decaying mechanism that considers the proportion of memory size and the amount of data surprise, resulting in better memory management. So basically, when something surprises you, it has a high memory, let's say, factor at the very beginning, and then over time, it kind of learns to give that less attention or less priority, whatever you want to call it. So again, think about something surprising that happens in your life. Right at the time of the surprise, you are thinking about it a lot. It is in your memory. It is deep in your memory. But then as time goes on, that memory starts to decay. You start to forget details about it. And days, weeks, months, years on, that memory becomes more abstracted and less important because it is less surprising in the current time. This decay mechanism is in fact the generalization of forgetting mechanism in modern recurrent models. So what is the Titan's architecture? It is the ability to incorporate that type of learning, that type of memory into an AI model. An important remaining question is how to effectively and efficiently incorporate memory into a deep learning architecture. We present Titans, a family of deep models that consists of three hyperheads, core, 
long-term and persistent memory. So think about core as short-term memory. That is the most important memory in that moment. And it is responsible for the main flow of data. Then they have long-term memory, which is responsible for storing and remembering memories over the long term. And then they have persistent memory, which is, as they describe, a set of learnable but date independent parameters that encodes the knowledge about a task. So it's not short term memory, it's not long term memory, it is just baked into the model itself. And they actually give three different variants of the Titan architecture with different trade offs for each of them. So they incorporate memory as a context, a layer, and a gated branch. I'll try to explain what those are in a moment. Now, we observe that our Titan architecture outperforms all modern recurrent models as well as their hybrid variants across a comprehensive set of benchmarks. And Titan scales to larger than 2 million context window size, which is the current state of the art limit of what models are capable of with the Gemini model. So the next section is learning to memorize at test time. Now, as a reminder, test time means inference time. When you prompt a model and it gives you the response, that in-between period when it's figuring out what to tell you, that is test time. And that is the interesting part because at test time, it needs to happen really quickly. And again, we reviewed that paper a few weeks ago called test time training, which is kind of using the same technique. It's basically updating the model itself at inference time, at test time. So we present a neural long-term memory module, which is a meta models that learn to memorize at test time. So first long-term memory, it encodes the abstraction of the past history into its parameters. So again, it's like a long-term memory. You don't remember every single major and minor detail of a memory over the long term. That is just not how the human brain works. And so again, they're trying to mimic the way the human brain works in these new Titan models. And so it's an abstraction. It is a rough picture of something that happened over the long term. Memorization, however, has almost always been known as an undesirable phenomenon in neural networks as it limits the model generalization. So if it memorizes memorizes everything, it is less capable of generalizing. That is why knowing what to memorize is an important feature of these models. It also causes privacy concerns. So if you memorize everything, then you'll run into IP issues. You'll disclose private information that shouldn't be disclosed. And it results in poor performance at test time. Now, my favorite part, the surprise metric. So as discussed earlier, an event that violates the expectations. I love that phrase. Basically, it's called surprise. You expect something and something happens that is not within your expectations, you're surprised, and thus, that is something to memorize. So it is more memorable for humans. Inspired by this, a simple definition of surprise for a model can be its gradient with respect to the input. How different is it from what it was expecting? The larger the gradient is, the more different the input data is from the past data. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The surprise metric, however, can result in missing important information that comes after a big surprise moment. So if you put too much attention on a surprising moment, then things that occur after it, you may not remember. Again, think about humans. So from the human memory perspective, an event might not consistently surprise us through a long period of time, although it is memorable. The reason is that the initial moment is surprising enough to get our attention. So we like we talked about through a long time frame, leading to memorizing the entire time frame. To improve the above surprise metric, we break the surprise metric into past surprise and momentary surprise. So past surprise measures the surprise amount of a very recent past and momentary surprise, which measures the surprise of incoming data. So it is the new surprise versus the surprise that just happened. But we also need a way to give the model the ability to forget. It can't just memorize everything. That's when you run into poor quality. So it needs a forgetting mechanism. When dealing with very large sequences, millions of tokens, it is crucial to manage which past information should be forgotten. To this end, we use an adaptive forgetting mechanism that allows the memory to forget the information that is not needed anymore. And so this forgetting mechanism takes a few things into consideration, but the gist is it factors in the surprise plus how much memory it has available and it decides what to forget. So in this next section, they are going to discuss the different ways that they can incorporate memory. And there are three, and each comes with trade-offs, as I mentioned earlier. So first, memory as a context. And this stuff is very complicated, so I actually got help from AI 
to explain it with analogies. So first, memory as context. So think of Mac, M-A-C, like having a personal assistant in a meeting who takes detailed notes of past discussions, long-term memory, whispers relevant information in your ear when needed, retrieval, and then helps you combine both past knowledge and current discussion to make decisions. It's basically like having someone record a bunch of memories for you and then tell you that memory as context to make a decision. Next, we have memory as gate, M-A-G. So in this implementation, we have two advisors in your head. One advisor focuses only on what's happening right now, the short-term attention. Another advisor draws from years of experience, long-term memory. And then you have a gatekeeper that decides how much to listen to each advisor. So one that is just hyper-focused on whatever is happening in the moment, and then another advisor that looks at the history only and doesn't look at what's happening in the current moment, and then you have this third person who's deciding how much of each to use in whatever decision you need to make. And then you have memory as a layer, which is different from the other two. It is essentially putting information through different layers, and each layer is a type of memory. So for example, the first filter might be processes everything through long-term memory. The second filter is looks at immediate context through attention. And then each layer refines the information before passing it to the next. Now, as I said, there are trade-offs, so let's discuss the different trade-offs. So Mac, memory as context, is best for tasks requiring detailed historical context. MAG, M-A-G, is more flexible and can switch between short and long-term focus. And then MAL is the most efficient, but slightly less powerful. So three implementations, maybe you use them all, maybe you choose one. Different trade-offs that you need to think about if you're implementing something like this. And so how do they perform? Well, across the top, you have the different benchmarks that it was tested against. So Arc E, Arc C, Wiki, all of these. So as we can see up top, these are the different types of architectures. We've talked about Mamba on this channel before. We've talked about TTT, test time training, and transformers. And here are the Titan models. So if we look across the board, pretty much the Titan models win. It is really that simple. And this is for a 340 million parameter model. Then you have the 400 million and 700 million parameter models. And as you can see, the ones that are highlighted performed best across the different benchmarks and Titans did incredibly well. Now next, the needle in the haystack test. So that just means when you have really long context windows, can it remember and retrieve things that are deep in that context window without forgetting or getting messed up? So what we see here on the y-axis is the accuracy in terms of retrieval from a long context. And then on the x-axis, we have the sequence length. Now, as you can see, here's GPT-4 and GPT-4 O-mini in gray, these two gray ones. And then with the Titans MAC across the top, as the context length increases, it stays pretty consistent in performance, but the other models drop quickly, especially some of these other models right here. And this is for a few shot setup, and then here's a fine tuning setup. And again, as you can see, the Titans models across the board outperform the other different architectures in terms of needle in a haystack. All right, so the conclusion. We present a neural long-term memory that, as a meta-in-context learner, learns to memorize at test time. So it is a recurrent model in nature and adaptively memorizing tokens that are more surprising and are close to surprising tokens. I absolutely love that intuition that the researchers had. Our experimental evaluation on diverse tasks validate that Titans are more effective than transformers in recent modern linear recurrent models specifically for long context. And so that's it. That is the way that they are proposing to give models better long-term memory with this surprise mechanism. I find it so fascinating and congratulations to the author of this paper. I'll link the paper in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.